Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. First time visiting, subscribe, like, share. Um, today I thought I would um, talk about the not so new immigration rules. I say not so new because they've been out a couple of months, but I haven't I haven't covered them. So therefore, um, I'm not quite sure if anybody else has. I'm sure if you are really looking for this information, you know where to go and find it. But sometimes I just like to kind of put it out there for those who might have, who might find it a bit difficult with the jargon. Okay, so this is the new immigration rules in force and SOC codes. The SOC codes is what they use to determine whether or not your speciality fits with the job description. Um, one of the rules of coming into the country is that, you know, you have to meet the SOC code. And that's something you really have to worry about. It's something that the recruitment office or the employer needs to worry about. So I'm not going to go too much into that, but it does mean that you can't just turn up now and go for a job. You have to go and be assessed through this SOC code process. Um, so, the new statement of changes to the immigration rules introduces two new visa types for business entrepreneurs and the startup and innovator. The latest statement also introduces changes to the tier one investor visa route. We all know about that. Updates the countries and it updates the countries whose nationals have lower documentary requirements for tier four student visas. Employers need to be aware of key changes to the tier two sponsorship regime for work visas, including increases to many of the salary thresholds in the code of practice. I think that is where certain um, professions need to have a 30,000 threshold. The startup and innovator routes, the current tier one graduate entrepreneur and tier one entrepreneur routes, the main routes for individuals wishing to set up or run a business in the UK, was scrapped on the 29th of March 2019 and replaced by the Startup and Innov Innovator visa categories. So it looks like T1, Tier 1 is broken down into maybe two or three categories by the looks of it. Extension applications for current Tier 1 entrepreneur migrants will remain open until 5th of April 2023. Um, the startup category is an expanded version of the Tier 1 graduate entrepreneur category intended for those starting a new business for the first time in the UK. Applicants do not need to be graduates nor have secured funding. The innovator, the innovator category is intended for more experienced business persons who will need to invest 50000 in a UK-based business from any legitimate source, reduced from 200000 for most Tier 1 entrepreneur applicants. So it looked like it used to be 200000 now it's gone down to fifty. Maybe they couldn't make the 200000 or not make enough of it. I guess one two hundred thousand against six or seven fifty thousand, you know, it does make sense. Okay, so new visa routes will require applicants to be formally endorsed by a trusted organisation in the UK, such as business accelerators, seed competitions, and government agency, as well as higher education providers. So these are the people who are going to sponsor you. They have to be credible. They have to be institution. They have to be an institution. They have to be accountable, all that kind of stuff. So the onus is on the third party and they're going to have to go through all that process. So you have to be very, very valuable in order for them to go through all of that, I would imagine. These endorsing bodies must assess an applicant's business proposal against three key endorsement criteria, namely innovation, an applicant has a genuine original business plan, viability, the applicant has the necessary skills, knowledge and ex experience, and scalability, potential for job creation. In keeping with the principles of sponsorship, whereby sponsors are the eyes and ears of the Home Office, i.e. the border guards, endorsing bodies must also agree to stay in contact with the applicants with checkpoints 6, 12 and 24 months after application is granted. 
You have to ask yourself, why would anybody want that responsibility? Not only do you recruit that person or you employ them and you have to stand more or less guarantor for them. I mean, that's what they're really saying. But you also have to check in with them every 6, 12 and 24 months. It's a lot of responsibility. The endorsing body must be satisfied that applicants are continuing to work on their business ventures and have either demonstrated reasonable progress with their original ideas or are pursuing new ideas that are equally innovative, viable and scalable. If an applicant does not satisfy these criteria or misses a checkpoint, the endorsing body must report this to the UK Home Office. So that's another monitoring thing. I mean, I, I do understand what they say in principle, but in reality, it doesn't work like that. It really doesn't work like that. It's only the little people that get monitored, really, properly monitored. Otherwise, we wouldn't have so much fraud and, you know, organised crime. We wouldn't have that if everybody, the people at the top, were monitored as well, but they're not. Oh dear. Anyway, um, endorsing bodies for startup visas are listed on the www.gov.uk website. Your favourite website. You've all got to take note of that. There is not yet a set list of organisations that can endorse someone for an innovator, innovator visa, although endorsing bodies will need to satisfy certain criteria to demonstrate that they are a trusted organisation, including a track record of supporting UK entrepreneurs as well as an approval by the Home Office as an endorsing body. OK, so that's the innovator, in, innovator visa. This is the investor visa. The tier one investor visa Category is for high net worth individuals making an investment of at least two million in the UK to address concerns about the provenance of funds and protect against financial crime. The key change in this route is that now applicants must provide evidence that the funds have been held for a period of two years up from 90 days. Wow, can you imagine? You had to have had that two million in your bank account or otherwise you don't qualify I'll tell you something two million ain't gonna stay in my bank account not like that anyway anyway key, cha key changes on the tier one investor rules investments in government bonds will no longer count and the rules around investment in companies will be tightened. That's because of that. Remember that money laundering fraud thing that was going on? That was big. In addition, UK banks will have to confirm that they have carried out the requisite checks before opening an investment account. The changes came into effect on the 29th of March 2019, which is what? March, April, May, June, three months ago. And the changes will not apply to applicants made before the 29th of March 2019. So, if you got in before the 29th of March 2019, you're on a roll. The government has said that it also intends to require investors to undergo enhanced checks on their financial situations and business histories by a UK regulated auditor before making a visa application. There will be further rule changes dealing with this. So they're changing the rules all the time. So it, whatever endeavour you intend, always check out the rules. You really need to because when you think you're coming in on one rule, they switch it and change it and you don't know. It's not like that. It's the advertised. It's not advertised. So you're always having to keep up. I, you know, I suggest that if you are interested in things like this, you know, you need to subscribe to some of these um organizations that kind of promote it or discuss it or something tier two visas the tier two route is the main immigration route for uk employers seeking to recruit non-eea skilled workers tier two visa applications must meet certain minimum skills and salary thresholds as set out in the codes of practice this the latest statement of changes amends the code of practice 
so it amends the code of practice, resulting in an increase in the minimum salary sponsors will need to pay applicants for many standard occupational classification system. That's the SOC code I was talking about earlier. So let me read that again so it kind of makes sense. The latest statement of changes amends the code of practice, resulting in an increase in the minimum salary sponsors will need to pay applicants for many of the SOC codes. I'm not going to say that long word because that's what complicates it. But basically, they'll have a minimum salary that the sponsors are meant to pay and it will depend on the SOC code. The SOC code, um, let me see where it is. Just tell you briefly, um, is the latest the latest statement of changes in the immigration rules amends the code of practice resulting in an increase of minimum salary. I've said that. SOC codes are used in America, so it doesn't look like they're used here, and relates to job title and occupational speciality. So um, I'm not quite sure why it's found itself in UK legislation. Maybe UK, it has to be used in the UK as well because this is for the tier two visa and the tier two visa is in the UK. So maybe whoever wrote this doesn't know that the UK uses that as a benchmark as well. So SOC codes are used to assess the correct skill level and appropriate salary level for specific job roles. Sponsors and employers are now required to select the SOC code that closely matches the job description they are looking to sponsor the migrant worker for. This code will then be assigned to the sponsorship certificate. If it doesn't match, a certificate of sponsorship will not be issued. Wrong code means delays, possible rejection, more costs. So, if we're using the Tier 2 SOC codes, the codes of practice provide details of job titles and job skills. You can search by keyword or job title. Codes are colour-coded corresponding to the NQF skills level of each job. So the, the colours, and then I'm not going to go too much into these SOC codes. Blue is for PhD jobs, chemical scientists, R&D managers, etc. Green, NQF level 3 or above these codes, these roles do not qualify for sponsorship. So if you've got a green code, you don't qualify. Pink, NQF level 6, you can sponsor a migrant worker new to the UK only at NQF level 6 and turquoise not eligible. These positions are deemed well able to be filled by a resident work workforce. So, so that's a bit about the SOC codes. If an employer wishes to sponsor someone after the 30th of March 2019, it is important to check that the proposed salary meets any revised minimum salary requirement, which at the moment is 30,000. Not for nurses and stuff like that. I think they've been exempt from that. You know, the emergency staff. The exempt... Oh, here it is. The exemption from 30,000 minimum salary requirement for certain professions, which was due to end in July 2019, has been extended. This means that nurses, medical radiographers, paramedics and secondary school teachers in mathematics physics, chemistry and computer science and Mandarin do not have to meet the 30,000 minimum salary threshold, but everybody else does. There's a need for those people, so that's why they don't meet it. And the NHS doesn't pay that much anyway. OK, Tier 4 students who are eligible to switch to Tier 2 can now apply up to three months before the expected completion of their course rather than only after they've completed the course. That might be helpful to some of you. The Tier 4 stu student visas. The Tier 4 route is the primary route used for non-EEA nationals wishing to study in the UK, following the latest annual review of low-risk nationalities. The list of countries in Appendix H for whose nationals 
there are lower documentary requirements has been updated. So um, you can get that from the gov um, the gov uk website. Um, if you just put in Appendix X, it will tell you about those countries for which documentary requirements are less. From 6th of April 2019, nationals of the following countries can benefit from an easier documentary requirements when applying for tier four student visas to study in the UK. And they are Brazil, Pakistan, Mauritius, Oman, Peru and Tunisia. So it's probably easier process coming in from those countries. However, Argentina, the Maldives, Trinidad and Tobago, Tobago have been removed from the list, which means nationals of those countries will have to provide evidence of their money and qualifications when applying for tier four visas to study in the UK. That's Argentina, the Maldives and Trinidad and Tobago. They're going to be put up with all the other ones who try, who really find it difficult to get into the UK to study. So under the tier four child route used by non-EEA nationals aged four to 17 wishing to study at an independent school in the UK, further provision has been made to confirm funds are held or are being provided to them by a foster carer or close relative. So, um, Hi, significant points to highlight under the UK, under sorry, under the EU settlement scheme. There will be no application fee under the EU settlement scheme. Citizens of Norway, Iceland, and Lakistan and Switzerland and their family members can apply under the EU settlement scheme. The date by which EEA nationals must have been continuously resident in the UK and certain family relationships will need to have been formed will need to have been formed will currently be the 31st of December 2020. Let me read that again because I bumbled a bit. The date by which EEA nationals must have been continuously resident in the UK and certain family relationships will need to have been formed will currently be the 31st of December 2020. It will be possible to apply to for EU settlement scheme from outside the UK. Non-EEA citizens will be able to apply for an EU settlement scheme family permit to join or accompany an EEA citizen who has been granted status under the settlement scheme. And that's all there is really. So, yeah, we've got a lot of walls being put up, but um, sometimes they're not even physical walls, they're just administrative, procedural and bureaucratic. But we have to try and climb over them and, you know, relieve ourselves of the obstacles. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.